Hello and welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to Graz, Austria, and welcome to Magna. We're actually specifically at Magna Steyr's factory and engineering building. I am thrilled to bring this video to you because today we are talking about electric vehicles, temperature controlled dyno testing and range test cycles. This is a topic I wanna to get more into. You guys know we do a ton of range testing on our channel. And what we're trying to do is bring more information to you about how cars are engineered, produced and brought to market. It's extremely complicated. We're only brushing the surface, but we wanna get this broad picture overview through the series of Inside Magna videos. And then we're gonna figure out what you wanna see and go super nerdy in depth over the coming years. We have so much to talk about. I'm thrilled to do this project. Project. And today we're at Magna's integration building where we're talking about, yeah, range test cycles, thermal performance of electric systems, HVAC systems, basically how the whole powertrain and cooling package comes together to make something drivable so that we evaluate it. Essentially, this is the step right before we get the cars and bring the footage to you. This is fascinating. <laughs> So we're going into this very indescript building. We actually can't move the camera because we're surrounded by vehicle prototypes. It's fast stuff you guys would just be drooling over that I really can't talk about. Anyway, my new friend Helfred's in here. Hey, great hey. to see you. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to Hi. meet you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I know I'm in the right place because I'm looking at turbochargers, electric motors, everything yeah. I love right here, differential systems. Uh, explain what you guys do inside of Magna here. Yeah, so I think you have seen already some stations. What we do here is the physical testing, the validation, the verification of complete vehicles. We are here on a complete vehicle roller dyno and we are we're doing the testing. We test, let's say, functionalities, we do the verification, we do tuning, we do optimization of functions, everything on complete vehicle level. You have seen something on a test rig. Now this is physical testing with the complete vehicle. This is like my dream job. I don't know how to explain. I've been wanting to see something like this forever. And I, we only have a couple laboratories in the US, maybe 10 or less that can do the efficiency testing and the drive cycles that you guys are running here. So this is really, really stellar to see. Yeah. Um, and the best part is, is it's just this little building and no one would know it's here. Yeah. It's Perfect. so cool. Show us what you got. Okay, let's get in. So we're walking back through this way and already greeted with just some amazing things up over here. I'm seeing computers and yeah, this is what we came here to see. Yeah. So. so Welcome again. What you can see here is our complete vehicle roller dyno. Here's already a test procedure of an electric vehicle. We are doing a lot of functional testing here. We are doing driving range testing, WLTP testing, EPA testing. So every kind of drive cycle, if it's a specific customer drive cycle, if it's a standard test cycle with uh, thermal management on very cold ambient, on very hot ambient, with solarization. So everything can be done on this roller dyno. So the whole idea really to bring a car to a laboratory like this and to engineer here is it's very expensive to ship vehicles all around the world and to get the conditions exactly repeatable every single time. So what you can do is with a flip of a switch, make this minus 35 or plus 35. How hot can you go? I think even much more up to 60, 70 degrees. Oh, shouldn't be so real toasty. And you can then say, okay, what happens if you start the vehicle and floor it instantly? Or what happens if you start the vehicle and you idle for a long time with a combustion vehicle? So you can run all these different yeah. types of tests. But one thing that was really interesting that you told me is you can actually run a WLTP test cycle here and model what this would look like. And so, um, uh, if you have, I guess, a certification person, the laboratory itself, not you guys, but the laboratory is so stringent, you can actually do official range testing here. Exactly. So we prepare everything for the test. Um, first of all, before the test is running, we are checking everything that the vehicle fits how it should work like we do bug fixing here if you know at a certain temperature we have some issues mm. we can prepare it several times we can do it unless uh, the issue is fixed and finally if you're close to the certification we're doing everything here and then finally the homologation procedure takes place so uh, in other episodes that we've shot with magna uh, we've explained that magna can 
provide a whole host of engineering services from you know literally a fresh automaker who just has a sketch and idea and actually engineer and produce a car from the ground up all the way to working with large oes and just assisting with their projects perhaps if it's a uh, combustion adapted chassis uh, to battery electric similar to like an i4 or a mini cooper se something like this it would be the idea um, but when would be the first time you actually bring a car in here to start playing around with it is it before you do road testing or after road testing let's say first of all after we do the basic um, commissioning at standstill we're doing the low voltage checks we're doing the safety checks everything must be safe before then we start with the startup procedure um, low speed driving on our test track which is close to our facility and then if it goes to functional testing calibration high speed we're going here on the test track so you can go here and what uh, speed range can you go up to on this um, I think it's close to the uh, 300 kph so, oh, the so 200 range, miles per hour uh, 200 miles yeah 260 kph. 260 kph. 260 so, yeah, okay, kph. Oh, sorry, so, so 155, 160 miles per hour. Yeah, so exactly. yeah, which is, you know, Autobahn speeds, that's the maximum yeah. speed of most electric vehicles. I can't think of very many that go yeah. higher. And of course, with most production cars, they're not going this yeah. fast anyway for efficiency. They, they kind of cap them down a little bit. Um, but can you walk us through just broad scale and then maybe we can even go inside and see everything here. And then I'd actually love to see a test cycle being run because I can see on this computer, this sort of like mountain looking thing i imagine this is the test cycle that the driver is trying to follow exactly i would say let's go to martin and he will introduce in detail oh that'd be great thank yeah. you so much so let me introduce you a little bit more to the dyno here so as helford also mentioned we are able to uh, run this from minus 35 degrees to 55 degrees we can uh, simulate the sunlight with the full light spectrum. Yeah, so if you come in here, if you can take a look up high and you can have totally different light uh, spectrum, right? So you can go from a warm to cold or how does I this don't work? Know. It's, it's always the same spectrum. It's okay. a full uh, spectrum uh, like you see uh, I, 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 actually I'm not an expert on uh, how to define the spectrum, mm -hmm. but it's containing uh, uh, the U, V, A, A, and B, and oh, so, so on. Oh, so it's got a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's really like full sunlight. Wow. And you can see the driver is even wearing sunglasses. He in has there. to. So he has right. to. That's really kind good. of our safety uh, restrictions. Yeah. Once he has to do something inside and is not uh, covered by the windshield, he has also to wear then a hat and to uh, oh, put on uh, the sunscreen and so on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we use that for thermal testing, so we uh, test the HVAC system, we test uh, all the different fluid temperatures, and therefore it's needed that we also have sunlight. Um, this is also for emission tests or for a range test for the EPA tests. But um, when we do thermal tests, you have to uh, think of a driving situation like parking the car on a very hot uh, place then leaving the car then uh, uh, we have 45 degrees Celsius ambient temperature and uh, full sunlight and then we uh, keep the car there for one one and a half hours and then the driver comes back gets into the car starts the car and how long does it take till certain zones of the air, uh, of the of the cabin reach a target temperature Right, yeah, so you go max AC and then how quickly can you yeah, pull correct, down? Correct. And, um, you know, something that's interesting as well, and, and just a point to bring up as we talk about WLTP and EPA and all these cycles, um, a lot of our viewers, I think, think the manufacturers rate the cars, mm -hmm. right? So they say, oh, well, insert brand here said my car will go 300 miles, but it's not them. They have to share what the test cycle provides and each car has to run through when it gets through range testing or efficiency testing a set multiple drive cycles in a somewhat fixed standard yep. which then they have to legally display that number on the paper it's not the manufacturers rating no. the car it's it's the same for every OEM right. everybody has to run through the same procedures and of course um, nobody will try to make the range worse than it uh, could be <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, but uh, of course there might be a difference between what the customer really sees then at the end and uh, what's rated but uh, for example if we as a test lab get a car that has been certified somewhere else then we should get the same result here 
okay, very interesting. So you'll get that same exact result uh, and you can run any drive cycle that you want here. So you can do yeah. all the US cycles, you sure. can do all the EU cycles, all the China cycles and, and calculate things however you want. Um, the interesting thing with this though is it's not necessarily representative of what a customer would get in their car mm -hmm. because they drive in cold conditions or in warm conditions and so um, perhaps you know this is where we come in as you know sort of this bridge between engineers and, and our viewers is trying to explain how conditions will affect the range of the car because mm -hmm. um, it, you know some people buy a car and say it should do 300 miles and they only get 230 sure. and we're like yeah duh it's minus 10 degrees outside yeah <laughs> but this is some uh, you know education that needs to happen and that's also something that we can do here we just uh, precondition the car at a very low temperature then we uh, run a certain cycle and look how how much the range will uh, change then oh so double walled <laughs> uh, double wall, yeah. yeah. That, that's for thermal insulation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Because of the noise, because it's quite noisy inside. Right, yeah. But. Wow, it's really loud in there. <laughs> Amazing. So you can barely hear it in there, and it's yeah. already just so loud in here. Yeah. Imagine if we have 260 kph inside, <laughs> that's very, really loud. <laughs> really screaming. So this is your airflow. That's. Our air blower, yes. And does it is it attached to the dyno at all? No, 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 no. These are four separate rollers with four separate motors, and oh, they are wow. synced just uh, yeah through they software can with the software. Yeah, they yeah. Communicate yeah. with each other. And you can obviously put a really big car in here if yeah. you wanted to. We can adjust the wheelbase from one meter and eighty to four meter and thirty. So there's only one problem with this. You only have four rollers. Yeah. And when the electric G six by six comes, how will you do this? <laughs> Yeah, with the electric one, it will be different depending yeah. on the on the concept. But uh, yeah. for the previous one with the combustion yeah. engine, yeah. you just had to close the um, the how is it called? The differential. Differential, perhaps? yeah. And yeah. then they uh, disassembled two wheels. Okay, really? So you pulled the wheel? That's right, because you made the G six by six here. And this one was not certified here. So right. Yeah. Okay. I just know but that you, it's you done did, like this. So you basically had to adapt it. That's yeah. that's amazing. I love it. I, I was just making a joke, but there actually has <laughs> been a six by six. <laughs> um, so yeah, can you kind of explain a, a, a little bit about the room? Yeah. So what you see here. Of course, the dyno, you can adjust the wheelbase by uh, uh, moving the rear rollers. Then you have the wind blower, sunlight simulation, and the air is circulating here in the, in the building. Up there, there are big uh, coolers or air exchangers, and then it goes down to the uh, blower and then the, uh, again to the car. And the things you see here in the back, they are mainly for emission testing. Yeah, so all of this over here. Yeah, this, this is all needed all for these, a battery electric vehicle. Yeah, button. all of these pipes, it's so much less complicated with a battery electric, isn't it? It is different. Is it uh, even more complicated when you start evaluating plug-in hybrids? Because you need yes. to look at battery yes. state of charge and yeah, motor. Yeah everything in the most complex way then. Yeah, and then you need to look at like this changeover period. And so do you do a lot of plug-in hybrid work here? Uh, it depends always on the project. Right yeah. now we don't have that many plug-in yeah. uh, hybrid. Uh, the, the projects that we have right now are yeah. uh, mainly battery electric. Yeah. And of course we do a lot of emission tests, but yeah. right now a lot of battery electric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is amazing how loud it gets in there and how silent it is out here. Yeah, but it gets way louder now when the driver is starting, uh, especially the wind blower, it's very noisy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, what we did now is we uh, moved the, the monitor to the windshield uh, so that the driver can see exactly the same that we are seeing here on this monitor. And so what is, yeah, sh tell us what yeah. all of these are here. So this white line, this is the relevant line. The driver needs to follow this line. Here you see the full uh, WLTC cycle. So this is the WLTP cycle yes. here? Very nice. And how long does it take to run this test? Uh, what is it? 1,800 seconds, I think. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. okay. And what are these temp... These, uh, you have a barometer cell yeah. temperature of, that, of inside this room? Inside, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, right now we're not running our official tests. We would need the car to yeah, precondition. Pre and yeah, yeah. Uh, also, we now have the sunlight switched on, right. uh, which is not valid for the WLTC. But EPA does factor in HVAC systems. Yeah, in the SO3. Right, right. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
but um, if we now start this cycle. And how long does it take a driver to get trained for this? Ah, it takes a while. Yeah, because you have to be really precise with yeah. the accelerator. He must be the smoothest driver in real life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now it's, it's even harder because uh, of the sunlight inside. He doesn't see the, uh, this, this the screen line very so well. good. So it's, it's harder now. The official WLTC is without the, without the, the sunlight, sunlight and it's then even, even and better to And he's drive. having to use the accelerator pedal and the brake pedal yes. depending on drive mode of the individual yes. vehicle. And where is his speed? Is it this little line right here? This X, yeah. Yeah, this X is exactly his speed. Yeah. You see that going around here. Right, yep. So he's going, you know, about 12 kilometers per hour or something like this. Yeah. And then you, we can see his speed right here. 15, 16, yeah, 17. Yeah, you also see that. Oh yeah, of course. And then this is the kilowatts of the car yes, or of the dyno? The of the dyno. Of the dyno, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, a typical drive uh, cycle is uh, half an hour. Yeah, and yeah. And after half an hour, then we have to change the car, then the next car is tested and so on. Oh, because so you have it, to it's test not only driving. different versions of the car, is that why? or? Uh, no. So what we're also doing here is conformative production testing. Uh, we get cars from the production line, mm -hmm. uh, battery electric cars, but also combustion engine cars, and we test them for range, for uh, electric consumption, for emissions. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in Europe, this is legally required to do the COP measurements. Mm. And uh, if all results are within the declared values and within the legal values, then the car can go back to production. Mm -hmm. If and then that gets sold on to someone at that yes, point. Yeah, yeah, that's already a customer car. Yeah, and um, this this uh, is just a single test with a car. And it won't be too long because you don't want to put too many miles on a customer car. Or how does this it's, work? It's one WLTP. Yeah. Oh, so okay. it's in total around about one hundred kilometers. Okay. Yeah. With all sense. the preparation, all the. Uh, uh, and do you? And, so. and it has to be a random car. Uh, it has to be a random car, yes. Yeah. Oh, interesting. That makes production even more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. And so this is uh, this is what happens. So once you get your data at the end, what mm -hmm. uh, what parameters are you looking at, and what? Uh... Uh, it, it depends on what test we're doing. Mm -hmm. If we're doing a thermal test, we have uh, of course hundreds of measurement uh, of, of temperature sensors. Yeah. Uh, if it's an emission test, we look at the emission results. And it really depends on what we're looking at. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. This is really cool. Well, um, and then I guess just to, to finish up a quick video today, um, what, uh, in your opinion, is the best drive cycle for determining range? Because each has their own positives and negatives. And I know it's not your main job to evaluate mm -hmm. them, but um, in your impression, uh, which, which seems to be the most relevant to real world testing? To real world testing. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the WLTP uh, is not that good for real world testing as there is no HVAC system mm. or no AC. Uh, there is only the 23C uh, uh, ambient temperature. Right. Maybe the EPA cycles are a little bit better for uh, showing the, the actual range, but I'm not the real expert on that. Yeah, so perhaps we need to make an out of spec and magna test cycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, there are a lot of real world drive cycles that yeah. uh, the different companies are testing with. Yeah. Uh, every OEM has a, a certain uh, uh, procedure or yeah. also uh, now there is a lot of real world testing, not on the dyno, but uh, on public roads or bringing real world uh, drive traces to a dyno and, right, and running and this run it on, yeah. the, on a dyno. Yeah. So uh, it's always bringing the road to the rig, uh, but with as much information from the road. <laughs> right, yeah, that's super neat. Well, I can't thank you enough for showing us this. Yeah. This was really yeah. fascinating. I'm thrilled we're able to bring this stuff to our audience because this is all I've been trying to do for years. This is great. <laughs> it's really, really, really good stuff. And uh, cool to see this thing running. I mean, I know he's running a cycle right now, but we saw this thing going you know, 120, 130 kilometers yeah. per hour and it makes so much noise and everything mm -hmm. in there with the fans blowing and it's so cool to see the car so so still but the wheels going so fast it's just awesome yeah can't thank you enough for the experience thank you